Good afternoon. I'm Pastor Lisa Burbank, and this is your Prayer Chapel Pick Me Up from Lutheran Church of the Cross in beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida. Today I'd like to talk with you about one of the readings that we heard last Sunday in our church. It's a reading that reminds me of when I was a little girl and my mom would walk me to school each morning. We had several blocks to travel, and since we lived in Chicago, it was kind of intimidating for a little person like me to cross those busy streets. But every time I got scared as I came up to an intersection, mom's hand would firmly but gently wrap itself around my own tiny hand. I then felt safe and secure knowing that I wasn't alone, but that I was instead walking with someone I could trust in to get me safely to where I needed to be. The passage of scripture that reminds me of this story is from the prophet Micah. And the last verse of it is famous because it has become for many people their motto of what living the Christian life and trusting in God is all about. I'd like to read to you that verse, but I'm going to back up a couple of verses before it so that you get more of the context. So here goes, Micah chapter six, verses six through eight. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Now the prophet begins the passage by asking what God requires of us to atone for our sins. Back then, an animal was often sacrificed as a sign of the person's remorse and promise to try to live better. Or sometimes oil was offered with the animal sacrifice, which would have been a costly thing to burn up. But then the prophet asks a strange question, asking if God would require the sacrifice of his firstborn son in order to gain forgiveness. Now the answer to all of these questions is of course, no. None of those things are required in order for God to forgive us. And that's because as Christians, God has already given us what we couldn't give ourselves. God gave the life of the son, Jesus, in order for us to be made whole. Jesus took the place of all sacrifices, putting an end forever to that practice so that we might instead receive God's total forgiveness. What a liberating thought that is, that I don't have to prove my worthiness to be forgiven because I can't. But with that liberation comes responsibility. As Lutheran Christians, we often say that we are saved from sin and saved for service. And this passage from Micah bears it out. Which brings us to that last very popular verse. After discounting the things that humans used to trust in to get their souls right with God, God announces a new deal for them, which is really an old deal actually, because instead of being based on a transaction like one sacrificed animal equals one forgiven sin, God now reminds us of what really matters, our relationship with God. He has told you, O oh mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Because God has given us mercy, we are freed to serve God by dealing fairly with each other, offering kindness to others, and walking humbly with God. This last line about walking humbly with God is really the essence of what it's all about. Because walking humbly with God means you acknowledge that everything you have and all you are is dependent on God. When you can keep that fact in your focus, your relationship with God will grow stronger because you will trust in God's care for you. And that will allow you to treat others with fairness and kindness because it will flow naturally from your God-filled heart. So as we enter the middle of our Lenten journey, our challenge is to not get discouraged about the length of the journey, 
or the things about ourselves that we are discovering that maybe we're a bit scared of. Instead, we have the opportunity now to place our hand in God's hand, allowing God to lead us and give us what we need to find our way to where we need to be. So will you pray with me now? Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for showing me the right way to walk on my Lenten journey. I know I have nothing to offer you, but my trust in you. Please help me to walk this way with you, trusting that you will show me how to treat others fairly and with kindness. Thanks for taking such good care of me. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next time.